Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk you through activating the built-in approvals workflow that's part of SharePoint. So uh, in most cases, when you're doing a workflow, you need to install SharePoint Designer, but this is the exception. You can customize this workflow from the browser. But however, it's not enabled by default. You need to go into site settings, find your site collection features under here, under the site collection administration, site collection features. And at the very bottom of that long list of features, there is this, the workflows, aggregated set of out of the box workflow features provided by SharePoint. That's the one you need. So you activate that. And that gives you access to a few extra workflows. So now I can go into my procedures document library where I want this specific workflow to run. And in that library, I'm gonna go into library settings and find the workflow settings. As you see, this list uh, doesn't have any workflows yet. So I'm gonna add a workflow and there I'll find a list of my reusable workflows. And this one, the approval, that's the one I'm looking for right now. But these three, the SharePoint 2010 workflows, those are the ones that got activated when I activated the feature. So this is the one we're gonna use. So I'm gonna choose this one, choose this the reusable template. Then I'm gonna give a name for this instance of this workflow. So I'm gonna call it procedure approval. I'm gonna use select the task list that this workflow will be using and a history list. And then I'm gonna allow this workflow to be manually started, but I'm also going to start this workflow to approve publishing of a major version. That means that this workflow starts immediately when an item is published. So remember, you can have that minor and major versions. If you have that enabled, this runs. So this is what I'm gonna do. So now I can configure the workflow that is who are the approvers? I'm gonna add myself as the approver. And if I have more people here, let's add Antonio also. So I can select one at a time or all at once. So um, I'm gonna set all at once here. And then I can add a new stage. That means that if people, if I have several stages, for example, if I have all the C-level executives, they should approve first, and then finally the chief executive officer should approve, then I can do two stages. Once the C and the other C-level um, managers have approved, then it goes to the CEO, something like that. And of course, this should be used to facilitate the business rules that you already have. You can also add groups here. Those would be, of course, be mail-enabled security groups in SharePoint Online and AD groups in SharePoint On-Premise. All right, then I can add a request. Please approve this newly published procedure. And then I can set a due date. Uh, and I can set a fixed due date, but even better here is to set a duration due date for the task down here. So if I set two, that would mean two days uh, until the task is due. That will be set automatically. Of course, you can have weeks or months there also, but two days seems uh, more rational. And then I can have a CC, a person that gets notified when this is sent out. And uh, this one is interesting, of course, and on first rejection. So if somebody rejects, then the other ones won't have to reject also. The whole thing will be rejected. Uh, and of course, if the document changes, so if somebody published a new version of the document, then the previous approval is, is void. It's not interesting anymore. So we should end the, the workflow then. And um, the approval status, of course, after the workflow is completed, then the approval should be done. Let's remove Antonio there in the example so I can do, do all of this myself. We'll remove this stage. Yes. Now I can save it. So now this procedure approval is there. So I can go into my procedures and I'm going to write a new procedure here. And that's going to be a complaint. How do we handle complaints in this? Uh, 
And we're gonna handle those humbly. Uh, let's go out to the document library. And as you see, that is still in the draft version. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish this now because I've enabled the major and minor version settings. So I'm gonna go into more and I'm gonna publish this now. No comments on that. So now I see I get to approve the uh, start of the workflow and I can change how the workflow starts for this particular item, but I'll keep the defaults and just start this workflow. There you go, it's still pending. So let's check the workflow status of this now. I'm gonna go into the workflow um, page for this document. And now you see it's, it's running in progress. So let's go in and check the, the status of that. And as you see, I can see what's happening with this workflow now. It's even doing the Visio thing here. But as you see, it's uh, uh, created a task that's assigned to me that's due two days from now on Friday, the 1st of September, and it's not started yet. And it's the related content. So here we go. I have one task assigned to me, and that's the end of the approval process. All right, let's go into my tasks, find that on the site contents. And there's the tasks, there's one in there. So let's go in there. So there's the task, and now I can open that task and say I'm gonna approve this. And now you see that the outcome of this task was approved. So I'll go back to my procedures and there you see the complaints now has been approved. We also see that this document was modified by the system account. So I can't really see directly who made the approval. It seems that this was modified by the system account. So that's a drawback of using this built-in uh, approvals for 2010 workflow. You can of course see who did the change in the workflow page. Click on workflow here. I can see exactly what happened and who made the change like that. So you see that it was approved. And you can also, of course, see the tasks. But if you go into version history of that particular document, you see that system account made the last, uh, the last change. So the workflow is actually run as the system account, which might be a drawback for you. So um, that concludes my demo on the built-in approvals 2010 workflow and how to enable it and how to use it. Thank you for watching this demonstration.